um, ban out the weird, crazy champions that they weren't yep. are not used to playing, and then don't die level one. That was the other thing uh, their coach was harping on. So a little bit of power and a little bit of unpredictability that can obviously get around a Pantheon in the game, but they don't want to have to deal with it. The way the curse was initiating from distance, we saw the globals kind of coming back yesterday. And yeah. It was pretty cool. The global, the use of globals has been really, really important in this first week of the LCS. And I do like these two jungle bands Focus on I Will Dominate because Curse banned out Elise. In, uh, yeah. It frees up TSM to ban the other two interesting champions that he has used. And uh, it's going to force him onto something. It's a good point. Yeah. Very jungle focused uh, game for the bands here for both teams. It does look like Zekent wants that. Annie He's been put in some bad situations himself that he's been able to overcome. So we've seen him kind of tried and tested already in the LCS, and he's done well. Yeah, and so since he pointed out that his New Year's resolution is to get a steal away a Pentacle, that means somebody else on his team is going to have to at least get a Quadra yeah. to get to that point. And he's going to have to set up Cop. It'll probably be Cop uh, that he's trying to get for that situation because Cop's been playing Caitlyn over and over right. and over. When you first pick an Annie, though, it seems like they probably want to go with another an aggressive carry, AD carry, a little bit more something like Jinx or Lucian, right. that they can get those kills if Andy gets a stun off to set something up. Well, Turtle, also a Caitlyn player, his first game with Team Solo mid, they set him up a pentakill in that bottom lane. So I would see that taking away from Cop could be useful for him, but it's not anything that they want right now. They want to show their hand at support and in that top lane. Well, this is the classic front line that TSM have been really liking on this patch. Um, they get the Olaf and the Shivana that can just dive right to the back line. And Leona has the long range engages yeah. that she can start off this team fight. Then they've been looking for some other source of speed boost um, usually to combo with this team. Either picking up a champion like Sivir or right. Karma. Um, and then the other option is just building that item, going with the Talisman of Ascension, which means that Leona would have to build some tankiness somewhere else because not going to be starting with the Targons if she does go for the Talisman. It looks like they may actually switch up here, not having the Pantheon, not having everything they can initiate long range with. They keep it close. Well, not super close. They're going to pick Lucy in it. So yeah, that would be the Maybe. other the aggressive AD carry would be the change for Cop going off of the Caitlyn, but works really well with Annie because he is a lane bully himself and he can gap close to get up with Annie's initiation and capitalize on it in lane. Meanwhile, the Wukong has been successful. Yeah. Briar will dominate. That's how they got in to the LCS. This is a pretty crazy team coming in from Team Solo Mid. Obviously, everybody's been saying the LeBlanc is uh -huh. unorth unorthodox anymore in that pick. But like you said, the Sivir pickup with the Olaf. They have the Shivana. And if, even if Leona's uh, Ascension doesn't get him in, they're going to have to Yeah, exactly. So he doesn't have to build, um, go with the coin. That yeah. means Leona is free yeah. to build either a Doran's or start up with the Targons and try and shove their lane early. Tanky Leona, that's going to be great. They're going to have the speed boosts from Sivir. So everybody's going to go wild towards the back line. But LeBlanc, we have to pretty much just pick out as a Bjergsen special here. He's had so much success on it. Why not return to this in the mid lane? He's got the single target focus, and he can get silences down on single members of Curse if he can pick them off before the fight starts. A little bit of AoE stacking damage would be here. That Hemo Plague would definitely help a Cyclone coming in from Wukong and from Mundo. We'll see as they trade off and on. Team Solo mid with the way Reggie was talking, and it didn't make it sound like there was anything huge Team Solo mid had, like Hotshot was saying, we have something in our sleeve. Mm -hmm. So they really seem like they're going back to wheelhouse strategies, bring it into the game, knowing you're going to win strong lanes and adapt as it goes. And that worked for TSM for the first few seasons. Yeah, I mean, they did use this pretty much exact strategy, very similar uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. going with all these bruisers that are going to get sped up. But Curse, they've sort of countered it with this AoE heavy um, team fighting that they're going to try and pull off. If Annie can set up a stun or Wukong can set it up, either one of them can capitalize on the other's area of effect stun, yep. and that could be a very good combo for them. Also worth mentioning, once again, we have the Shivana versus Mundo. Shivana almost always opting to take Ignite so she yeah. can cut through his health regen, so he frees him up to have the global advantage with teleport. We'll see what the blade build or the Sunfire build for him. If he tries to go hard, if he tries to go soft, nobody goes soft in the LCS. As the teams load into the game, though, I am going to make a prediction right now. I think that right. the fans might call this one for Team Solo Mage. Just a hunch, but let's check it out. According to LOLEsports.com, 80% of you think the TSM will cut on time. 
Give God a lot of fans. Start off the week with a right prediction like that. Well, at least Sunday starts the week, not LCS. Even Crepo said he was a fan, so he might have voted for them too. <laughs> wow. I don't have internet in here, though, so they can't. Oh, yeah, it's, it's hard to get reception in yeah. here. What Absolutely. You, what are you running on here, huh? Yeah. T-Mobile? Get, getting all my votes in. <laughs> so as we match up into this game, it's, I, I like the composition from Curse, the fact that they like to go back to Wukong. It's still something that other teams aren't really picking up. At least in the competitive play on the stage, we've heard some people have scrimmed with it. But yeah. as Curse likes to use it, I think it open up, opens up more for their compositions. They're definitely a team that's more confident in using these picks that right. nobody else is using. They don't care if other players aren't really um, supporting that in competitive play. And I think that actually does have a lot to do with their, the coaching staff that they have. Liquid and St. Vicious, both uh, pretty open-minded as far as new picks are concerned. Let's keep in mind, we, we kind of saw this matchup last game in the mid lane, that Riven LeBlanc. It didn't go so well, so we'll have to see yeah, how Yeah, not fares. so well for Pobelter in no. the last one, did it? So it's kind of, Voidboy may have that taken in the back of his head. Obviously, he's coming into this game knowing he's got to play his own way and his own tactics. We'll see if he does do it differently. A lot of teams have been putting the AD carry mid, especially that TSM does it, and he kind of stands. And you don't know if they're going top or bottom because everybody's waiting on these trinkets to come up. Yeah, if you don't have your solo laner go into the mid for the mm -hmm. dance off, then it sort of keeps the other team guessing. It's a slight uh, you factor. know who's going to be there, but yeah, right. pretty much we expected TSM to come out with this strategy for level one because uh, Reggie tipped us off. They just don't want to die level one. Nothing sneaky. They want to play standard. So looking forward, that's probably going to be yes. We have Shivana. Shivana should win early versus Mundo. All right, top lane's good. All right. Moving down to mid lane, we've got LeBlanc into Riven. Just saw how that turns out, but Belter did not have a good time. Mm -hmm. So Bjergsen should be able to make some pretty nice work of Void Boy. All right, mid lane's taken care of. Now the bottom <laughs> lane. We pick Sivir for a team composition pick. That's, right. that's not actually for the lane matchup there. Uh, it's more for the speed up for the late game. So that one might need a little bit of jungle attention to make sure that they keep up with the other two lanes. So we'll have to see if the odd one on his Olaf does make his early visits down bottom or if he tries to get one of these la um, solo lanes even further ahead. This also calls back to a little bit of what uh, Coast just used, trying to come out with the Olaf to go mid as, as LeBlanc roams, as Jat was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that you can do with uh, if you're a jungler and mm -hmm. you have multiple winning lanes is not even go to your lane that you're worried about. Just go to the lane that's already winning because there's only two options that can happen. You go to the lane and the other jungler does not show up, you're going to get your gank off, you're going to get either a summoner or a kill. But if you go to the lane and the other jungler does show up, if you're in the winning lane, you have the advantage still. So it's a win-win. Whoa, Zcat blows his stun right away. I don't think Special wanted all of that. They trade back and forth real quick. I thought they were going hard. They were going uh, for the early level two. We have the Targon start here mm -hmm. on Leona, but they were still pushed off of the wave. So even though Leona has the extra pushing power for, of those executes, they weren't able to get the early level two. And this Cop and Zekin team do have a slight upper hand now as they're shoving into the wave early. That does mean that they'll be far further up, though, for that odd one uh, gank that might happen down bottom. So we see Dominate and Odd One both pretty much equal on mirrored sides of the jungle. And in the mid lane, that's already a bit of a CS lead, at least off the first wave. So Voidboy was having trouble. He had to take shield first, and you obviously would to mitigate that damage because Bjergsen, as Reginald did, plays super aggressive. Yeah, Bjergsen definitely uh, an aggro player. Voidboy, though, um, he should be okay. He's good, actually started with a shield here mm -hmm. just to reduce auto attacks because a lot of the early harass from LeBlanc is in those extra auto attacks that she can get off. Bjergsen has been running hybrid, hybrid yep. penetration reds. A lot of focus being put there already. They probably knew they weren't going to get a full kill, but they wanted to at least pressure Bjergsen there. A little bit. I mean, they get off 100 health there. Mm -hmm. Semi-successful gank, I, I guess. He didn't lose out much, but he immediately returns to his jungle. You can see he does not want to fall any further behind the odd one, doesn't want to show odd one where he is on the map, or it will free him up to go for the confident gank. 
that we were talking about real early. Now, this Trinket Ward will see him, but it might be too late. Expesso's going in for the stun. He is going very hard. Odd one predicting after that path of Dominate going out of mid, and he predicts correctly. He gets caught by himself with Expesso and the team down bottom. Oh, oh, he throws it. The sun must have been in his eyes. Now he tries to get out. He does not want to give Double Bus over to this lane. So close right there. That could have been the first blood quite easily. The gank that we expected to happen did play out, but just not quite able to um, capitalize on it. I mean, it was a really good start, too. Expecial moves up, gets positioning oh. on the AD carry. Almost the dream gank right there, but just not quite enough. That was like a this is too good to be true panic. And then you kind of just mess it up. Coming up onto five minutes, Odd One and Dominate already trying to put a stamp on these lanes, but they return to the jungle. Dominate sees that bottom lane open. He soaks up the experience. You know, the odd one after he missed that axe too, he did pop his ghost here mm -hmm. to get away yeah, since right. Dominate came in for the for the counter cleanup. So that is a summoner down on the Olaf and his his next gank will be a little bit less potent. Bjergsen really trying to fast wave clear here. You see three into the broken wings of Voiboy as he tries to get his damage down, but Bjergsen, just with the chains, he's gonna be able to stay safe. As we look around, it looks like Dyrus is having a pretty good time in the top lane, 39 to 33. They both have gone shields, but Dyrus is still sitting on that potion, so even a gank may not take him down. He's having a good time against Quas. Yeah, as we as we saw before, um, the Shivana early mm -hmm. can push around the Mundo quite a bit. Ooh, Chain does miss. Um, especially since he has that com combat summoner advantage over the teleport Mundo. Pretty much all the kill potential for that lane is in Shivana's hands. And the only way to turn that around would be a successful jungle gank from Wukong. Hop and Z can't do what they can. Nobody's really behind in any of these lanes just yet. Those ganks from the junglers have given a little bit of a scare, but everybody still has flashes up. Everybody's ready to engage. Actually, Cops Flash is down, so we may see a little bit of jungle presence towards the bottom lane. And even if they did have some jungle presence yeah. down there from Dami, you know, Sivir is a, a really good pick against Annie because she has that spell shield. Um, right. The yeah, only yeah. really spell that you're going to be worried about is the stun from Annie. Um, and you're, as long as you block that one, then you won't get caught up in the full combo from the Lucian. It's just going to be up to Wild Turtle and CDS. Quick enough reactions. So level five coming up on pretty much everybody in the bottom lane here. We just see a special hit it. Wild Turtle's going to be very soon after. They're not really trading too much with that relic as well either. So not too much gold coming from that for a special just yet. They're hoping to capitalize on this level six though. So the changes when you know relics first came out, they were super popular because mm. um, it was only ranged. a thirty second cooldown and everybody was yeah. everybody was buying them. But now it's only the melees get to execute, and right. before you upgrade it, the cooldown on the extra charges is a little bit longer, well, twice as long. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're usually trying to upgrade those as quickly as possible. Back to the red buffs for the junglers, so this yeah. means they may have that presence back in lane. The ganks are going to be a bit easier, because you look at these lanes, too, and everyone kind of has either a slight gap closer or a way to pop an ultimate and really get out with the crowd control reduction. This is classic Shivana. <laughs> we have we've talked about it so many times where shove in the moon. Starting to get back. You proxy the wave. The point of proxying the wave is that you're close to the jungle camp, so you can then take an extra amount of gold. It's actually even a little bit better on, when you're on this blue side because double golems are worth um, are worth way more than either race or wolves. And uh, Dyrus is pretty happy here to get the wave, and then we'll see if he rotates down for those golems. So this is kind of like free farm for him, though. What Does Dominate have to really do anything to take action? Uh, I mean, he's go looking for his level 6, with each, which he just got. Mm. And it's going to be an interesting choice where he wants to use his ultimate. Ooh. Because that's all he has to turn Tries around. Tries to get the dash out. Cop gets a full boomerang blade to the face. They're going to be able to trade back a bit of damage, but that was a pretty good lane advantage there grabbed by TSM. So... We don't have uh, Darius taking the double golems, but he did spot out Wukong. Mm -hmm. And if he makes that call, Wukong is top. Boom. It opens up the bottom lane for aggression. They can easily uh, go for those Leona engages once they know Wukong won't be there because he's a huge, huge counter ganking threat for that bottom lane. He can come in invisible and pop his ultimate to knock both members up. Looks like that's what he's trying to do right now. 
Yeah, slowly but patiently hanging out in the side of the lane. I think Cop might put himself in somewhat of a bad spot, but TSM would, would see that and they'd say, we don't want to bite. We don't want to bite too hard. Bjergsen with that ward just over Wraiths, it really actually helping out Dyrus a lot to that top lane because Dyrus had placed a ward that just died at red and they're super comfortable in all their movements right now. Both junglers doing their visitations bottom. I guess Odd One right now is thinking that there will be a counter gank here. Um, because a dive would still be very dangerous. Annie already has her stun charged, and she's now level 6. Diving on the post-level 6 Annie with a stun proc is a very dangerous situation, and I mm -hmm. think he might be disappointed that there's no gank from Wukong, and probably just wasted a little bit of time there. Level 6 is on both the duo lanes. We actually have, uh, I believe, Cop just backing. He's going to go for the Triforce first build. He picks up the Phage. Dyrus once again going back behind Quaz, and there's really been nothing to stop these guys in the top lane, but the, the CS isn't that far apart. You're right. You don't gain a whole bunch from proxying mm -hmm. the wave if you're not picking up those double golems um, on respawn. What he's really trying to get out of that was uh, jungle vision. And he finally does get the golems, and he's also dropped that deep ward. So the next thing he is looking for is, again, the ping uh, tipping off his bottom lane that he has brought the jungler up top, and they're free to go aggressive. We'll have to see now. Bjergsen picking up Boots too. He goes for the Sork right away and he gets a Fiendish Codex. So they're going to start the transition of Olaf to the middle in LeBlanc because Bjergsen hasn't roamed too much yet. Not yet. Uh, he's had He has maxed the W again, so he mm -hmm. does have good minion wave control. Um, but he hasn't had the early lead over Void Boy. They're pretty much uh, neck and neck here. Only a few, uh, well, t I guess 10 minions is pretty decent. It'll work for now. You got to consider he also has or at least in the bottom lane, they're getting a little bit of a lead there, but it's only by a few. So everybody's sticking close, and that's how we like it. Anybody's game as we move into now. 11 minutes in, the gold lead, as you were saying, a little bit in favor of Team Solo mid, but we'll have to see if the dragon really creates a stretch for that and then it gives anybody the upper hand. Yeah, so the reason it's going so slow like this, like I said at the beginning, the, the, the lanes for TSM were all pretty much um, winning here. The solo lanes right. talked about they right. should win these matchups, and they have done pretty much it's played out as expected. Now we're getting to the point where the ward coverage is what's going to make the big difference in these games. Because LeBlanc, Bjergsen, is opening up on Voiboy. He is very much so opening up. The cooldown's not yet there for him, but you can see completely pushed out of lane, calling down Dyrus here. And he's been in the jungle, and having him back behind that really gives him good movement. Right. These laners that are winning so hard mm -hmm. are shoving up their lanes and then trying to rotate around to move here. So this is where the ward coverage I just talked about is coming into play. TSM, since they have the winning lanes and have warded up deep in Curse's jungle, they claim the dragon. It's pretty much theirs. Curse knows it. And they were, were not going to venture over there to contest. I don't think they're going to get much damage on this top turret if any has even been posed to it because great remote movement by Dyrus transitioning back to the top lane. TSM really a step ahead in everything right now. And we do have the early Blade of the Rune King build here coming from Dyrus. He's got the yep. Cutlass already, so it's around that time where Quas um, will will have to start worrying about that aggression. See if you know Dyrus decides to go for any anything very deep here. His ignite is up, so he'll be able to cut down on that healing regeneration. I just have to see, now that the dragon is down, TSM, they're basically just looking to avoid a disastrous gank from Dominate. Right. If Dominate cannot get off a good Wukong ult on one of these lanes, then TSM is going to continue to slowly increase their lead and just slowly... Uh, gain more and more of a gold advantage. And that's something you can't give Team Solo mid, that kind of momentum. Once they hold it, it's kind of like Bjergsen just takes the driver's seat of an F-16 and it's over. <laughs> All right, so he has shoved the wave once again. Now he's going to look to roam because he's got ward coverage around the mid lane. And I'd actually start to expect some sweepers coming out from TSM because that's how you turn this slow gold lead into a large gold lead. You use the sweepers uh, to clear out vision and make those roaming plays on one of the side lanes so you can grab an objective like a turret instead of just getting these uh, soft leads here from minion waves. So we actually have this swap. Boy Boy can't really build the magic resistance that he needs to fight on Bjergsen, so they swap the lanes out. Interesting uh, call right there. Bringing Quas down. 
You're right, he has that spectral cow. He's probably going for an early spirit visage, so um, they pull the first call to swap, but TSM are instantly reacting. Oh, and there's an instant reaction. The cyclone comes out, turtle goes away. The ignite takes him down with the calling. That first blood goes to Zekent. Expecial throws down the solar flare and flashes away with a roam up top from Bjergsen before this fight happened. Hits up Boy Boy. He tried to get away. He will this time, but Bjergsen finds him in another lane. So the TSM reaction to that swap was to send Bjergsen on the roam path and have their jungler cover mid. But vision of the jungler mid means that Dominate can go all out in the bottom lane. He ganks the duo as we expected. They pick up the first blood there because he did get his successful uh, Wukong ultimate off there. And they also can chain it into not only one turret, but some extra turret damage on the secondary. Getting a good aggressive win on that bottom has given them the upper hand here. Taking it down to about 25%. Special. Pretty tanky. He has a sight stone finish, so he's got the HP to hold off that bit of burst. They're stealing out red. See, the vision control is still in TSM's favor, so Voidboy. Oh, dear. Voidboy still. Everybody is just on his back this game, watching in the past few days on that Akali. And it's not what dead he's been yet. playing. Oh, boy, boy, 250 HP left. It's it's going to be a slow one, but he's going to go. Dyrus with the flash to finish that one <laughs> off, actually. He's getting tired of uh, boy, boy walking around. The worst part about these two is he keeps coming back. He's not able to get much gold, so he's going back with nothing to buy, maybe another potion, and then he comes back to lane, being very stalled out on their items, Curses. Um, down bottom, you know, the, the CS discrepancy between the AD carries is more than made up for by a specials oh, yeah. Targons. Uh, he's actually shared over 500 gold with that, 560 mm, nice already. One-to-one -one in turrets. You'll see them dropped in the top and the bottom lane, respectively. And it looks like Boy Boy will tend to mid once again. They said, if we go top lane, we're just going to be a catalyst to the roam for LeBlanc. And they're, TSM's going to want to keep up that roam. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I always like to see the uh, switch out of the talismans on the mid lane assassins that roam around. Uh, I would love a sweeper on Bjergsen, but the, he has kept with the Trinket Ward. And he's going to go for the kill oh under Oh my turret. gosh, he has a W coming up. He actually grabs it. I didn't think he had anything of what he needed in that second spell reel to come up, but he knew exactly well, what he was doing. Well, that's why people have opened up to using... Uh, their ultimate on the chain for LeBlanc because it will still have the full effectiveness even if you haven't leveled up. It's only level one chain, but if you use the ult one, then it's going to have the full power there. And he was confident to get the kill under the turret. Didn't even have to roam for that one. Now he's going to turn his eyes towards bottom since they've created that advantage already mid. Yeah, LeBlanc getting the 1v1 just opens up too much of the map for her. Zekent's going to be the focus on this one. And you still have Bjergsen, but Dominic comes in on the clone. Can he get Turtle? Flashes on. They will be able to capitalize on that kill. Ooh, look out, Bjergsen found in the wrong spot. Quaz has come into the fight on Teleport as well. Just a bit ago, they get a double kill going in for Dominate as that goes down. And it looks like, oh, Special gets hit with a Gleaver. Great job by Quaz. Can they continue to follow up? A bad spot in the W is enough of the percent burst to take him down. Let's we'll see if Quaz can really do what he needs to here. The blue buff has worn off of Bjergsen, so he is hoping for that W to come up once again. Oh, the juke! Oh, he the juke! It out. He'll be able to get past the special. Is it up? Can he get the dodge in? Bjergsen flashes. That is incredible. That's funny that he pulled this juke against the Wukong, because that is originally a Wukong special juke. You just press to your own medicine. Exactly. All right, so let's look at how it started out. Zinket gets a good double stun from the bush here, uh, but he's going to go down anyway because they got caught. Bjergsen was behind, so he was not able to join in this counterattack. He had to use his W to jump over the wall, even to get in range. And the teleport by Quas was a brilliant teleport. It should, by all rights, get them two kills as he flashes for the slow and special. But Bjergsen, waiting in the bush from the fog of war, goes for the assassination onto Cop. And R's oh. his Q because he can activate the second Q with his W and gets the full damage there. Then we do miss out on the clone juke, but usually <laughs> the clone is the thing that stands still, or it used to be before uh, it was patched, mm -hmm. and the player is the one that's going to go running off. So he does an immediate press S to stop, and his clone goes running, so everybody's chasing after the clone, which is usually something that Wukong does. That's really an amazing bit of mechanics as well. It's something you don't come across quite a, quite a bit, so you have to hit it every time it does happen. And it's interesting because it, it really works on older players that played with the old LeBlanc clone <laughs> that would always just stand still. <laughs>
almost plays against you. So 28 and a half to 25.8. Game slowing down here as we look at Dragon, but it is about to speed up very fast. 19 minutes in, it's four to three. I'm sure we're gonna see a few more kills here after this, unless they both have a gentleman's agreement and just ward each other out of position. It's gonna be a really dangerous dragon fight here. Uh, Curse are all, are definitely posturing like they want to contest it. ZK gets caught. Whoa, they throw in the solar flare, missed that. Tibbers is down, and Tibbers is down. ZK goes down first once again in the fight. Dominate, however, always able to answer with a cyclone, and he kicks out of it. Gets a good kill coming in at Dyrus as well. Curse doesn't necessarily want the dragon, and they nest one running away from this fight. Dominates, clone gets hit up. They do get the stun on that as well, so it's special is just gonna be, be chasing. All right, so the extra kill here for Curse, but extra health on TSM. So they're the ones shoving up this mid lane. Oh, Bjergsen's going to go get that giant pile of red money up top. <laughs> That's blood money. They had to they had to lose the odd one in Dyrus for, for that. So this is going to be easy transition, actually, for Curse, since they saw Bjergsen go up to the top. Mm. Even though there's a, there's a pink ward here for TSM, they have everyone respond from the fight, and no 3-0 LeBlanc in the area for TSM is a really good call by Curse. They make the objective count after the fight, even though they weren't able to chain it immediately. It was the rotation from Bjergsen up top that allowed Curse to go for that call. So we got 26-20-ish around your next dragon. You do see that Bjergsen a little bit ago, probably five, six minutes, did finish that Deathfire grass for himself. So he only becomes more dangerous Really backed off of that objective quite hard by Curse. So I guess Curse is feeling a little bit more confident about their skill set right now. Well, it's, it was interesting in Champion Select. I was like, yeah, both these teams are like really good team fighting teams because mm -hmm. they've got area effect on this side and then they've got sped up bruisers on TSM side. Right. We just saw the clash of these two team fights uh, from both of these compositions and Curse were the ones who came out the victors because it was a good AoE ultimate there from Dominate. Even though Zekin got caught out, he was right. able to get his tippers off. That's what you want from your support Annie. As long as she gets her AoE stuns off, uh, job well done, and they were able to capitalize. It's a pretty big uh, miss as well, like special kind of throwing out the solar flare. That's really their primary source of crowd control right now. So it affected yeah. it. I mean, that being said, TSM still with a nice gold lead here, yeah. and they're going to start pressuring this inner turret. Curse, a little bit too slow to defend it, but they might go for a counter engage because they have the ultimate back from Wukong. There it is. That does not miss that time, but Dominate says we need to counter initiate right now. It may not have been the best for them. Dominate goes down. Boy Boy follows quickly after. It's a double kill for Bjergsen. They are still looking for blood. Difference this time, they're able to get the first uh, attack there onto Dominate, and once one person starts hitting that Wukong, the rest of the team realizes, hey, he's got a black cleaver, he's not that right. tanky. He, yes, he has some health, but his resistances aren't there yet. They're able to blow him up, and after the point man is gone from Curse's team fight, they decide they have to back off and give up the turret. Turret for that, pretty much for the dragon that just went down, we saw Curse was able to grab, so the gold, still 5,000 gold in favor of TSM, however, here at 22 minutes. They have grabbed now four turrets as the map just continues to open up, and it's only gonna be warded even deeper. Since the start of the game, TSM has been putting the deep wards in. Dyrus was using it to farm, see if they can keep it going. The rotation there from TSM and Bjergsen recalling with the top minion wave walking right by him mm -hmm. gives Curse the go-ahead to answer turret. So, yes, they lost the fight, uh, yeah. two kills, and they lost their turret, but at least they were able to Got answer one with one outer. A lot more teams have been playing uh, the minion ways more strategically, being in the right spot at the right time. Sometimes in Boda, we'd see a, a team fight one, and minions are just coming out of your base, so you can't go anywhere with it. Yeah, the map movements have become just so important in these yeah. games. We saw earlier today, uh, CLG winning their game even without kills until like 23 minutes in because the crazy. map movements are what have been getting these teams the objectives there. And TSM gave a little bit uh, too much information back to Curse after that fight that allowed Curse to be confident in their call to shove up mid. We can see a few recipe items being thrown in there. The Negatron cloak coming oh, there's in a for Boy there. Boy. <laughs> he doesn't want to get taken out by Bjergsen. He's felt that a few too many times this game. Dominate is trying to do whatever he can, but they need to spread those kills out. A four kill Wukong, even more, isn't going to be the one to carry your team. Well, you can see everybody that is getting money is, is purchasing a Negatron cloak. 
Everybody's <laughs> trying to get some magic resist for themselves. They're they're not building even um, the aura. They're going straight Negatron cloaks. Everybody needs their own to protect themselves from the Bjergsen assassination. Gotta consider that Cop had the chance to go Caitlyn this game, but decided to go Lucian for the pretty much the first time. Yeah, I mean, I I was talked about the first pick Annie there and the combo of Lucian plus Annie being mm -hmm. real popular. I just think it's a, a bit stronger of a lane. And since they're going right. for this sort of team fight oriented composition, um, Lucian able to move around and do a bit more burst damage than Kaylin. She's really you know, more focused on the tower pushing and the very late game, just auto attack heavy. The TSM is Pretty, being pretty big bullies right now. They're saying we can easily get in here, clear this out, and force the fight. They want to force this fight, and it looks like there it goes. Talisman of Ascension goes. Actually, that was uh, on the hunt from Sivir, and it's going to be Wukong going in, dominating to the back line. The calling spreads across three on the front line. Odwin is able to take down Zcat, and the health bars are almost matched, but it's a squad of curse in the top side by Wraith, able to take down Odwin. They focused down on the rest of the team, and it was two split in the jungle. Woo, just the one for one. Yeah. But gold medal goes to Zikint right, Zikint right there because these fights are all about the initiation. TSM popped there on the hunt. They were running straight into that bush, and Zikint gets his AoE stun off, combos it with the ultimate from I Will Dominate here because he immediately turns around here. They make the call. Four members. Then it sets up Dominate for his ulti onto Wild Turtle and Bjergsen, the two carries of TSM. Whenever you see LeBlanc having to use her R to exit the fight, it's a very good sign for your team, and you can follow that up. But they were only able to trade kills in the end, so not a right. huge amount gained for Curse, even though it was very well coordinated. Another 80 HP, and they would have had all that shutdown gold on Bjergsen, so thumbs up for him getting out on that. Now has his home guards, and he, he's actually already putting money into his elixirs. They know they're pretty well off right now, and they can take those chances. A huge thing about that elixir, not only um, the ability power, but the cooldown cool yeah. reduction is so big on LeBlanc. Um, talked about if she has to use her R for exit, then it's a huge chunk of her power that won't be there uh, to execute someone, and that's why the initiations for both of these teams are so important, because you don't want to have to use those cooldowns defensively. Mm -hmm. We see Cop just finishing up that uh, Phage into the Trinity for us. He bought the Phage and then, you know, got enough money in the instances they were fighting with the dragons. Built a Bloodthirster in between the recipes. So he finishes those two items. TSM grabbing up a dragon. The second one for them in the matchup. And that's that 26-minute dragon we were talking about. The last one went to Curse. So good job by TSM to have map control. Yeah, that uh, build you're talking about on Cop goes right into the same sort of uh, idea behind picking Lucian instead of Caitlyn there. Mm -hmm. He's got the mobility from Trinity Force. Because these are going to be such brawly fights, he's going to have to rely on mobility and lifesteal to survive through them. You, can, you don't you want to be a traditional AD carry who stands back because you'll get dove on by this Olaf. An Olaf sped up by Sivir and a, and a Shivana is going to get to your AD carry. Yep. He's going to have to fend for himself in that situation. That's really what Cop is thinking about right now. We can see that Expecial is thinking about himself as well. We had Merc Tread last game on Leona. Now it's going to be the Ninja Tabi from all this AD they're facing. Dominate trying to jump in. Boy Boy as well. So really trying to mitigate everything they can and give themselves the upper hand. Already 7,000 gold. I'm sure that's a big enough of a power play for him. This is a dangerous a bush to be Seek out by Cop. <laughs> they, they need to play it safe. They're not even getting in range for wards. They're using everything else that they can. I mean, double pink wards is a really good purchase here from TSM. They actually have two more in the inventory, so everybody's really doing their part in the vision war. And they're trying to make Curse um, make one of those positional errors come into the bad spot. Oopsies, I touched Baron. <laughs> Oh, they could get Zekent. Will he get Tibbers off on this one? He turns around. He only gets it oh, off on no. two. A great ultimate by Dominate, but is it going to be enough without the follow-up of Curse there? Three members on to Dominate. A dash over the wall from Bjergsen to safety as Cobb does what he can from the back line, and it's only Quaz to peel for him. TSM gets the fight they want. I love how the odd one just pops his Ragnarok and runs straight at Zekent because you can't stun Olaf off of you, and he ends up having to burn that Tibbers not to... Uh, stop any damage here. So there goes Odd One, right for Zekint. Here, let's see if the Tibbers actually hits anyone besides Olaf. He doesn't stun any. Oh, yeah, he did get to. There we go. Yep. Never mind. He did. He stunned the backline. So that was a really good job by Zekint keeping his cool, even though he had an Olaf banging on his head. 
And they didn't even have the real initiation there. They okay. had to, on the hunt, they yeah. had the solar flare. They reached for it. These guys are hungry right now, and they just want to close this out. I mean, it's those split-second decisions right. right there. I didn't even see uh, the sun come out the first time around, but it was a good <laughs> job keeping his cool there. Um, but it was initiate too much from TSM. They were able to get to the back lines, and Bjergsen, like I said, able to use all of his cooldowns offensively that time around. You were mentioning those two pink wards before placed and then more purchased. Those have been there since every time TSM has started to kind of contest the Baron. It's only been Curse on their side of the court. I thought I'd say for the past nine, ten minutes, and it's not making it easy for them to come back. Now that it's a Baron'd up TSM and Elixir'd yeah. up, it's going to be even more difficult because they've got um, the capabilities to swarm under a turret even and go for the kills. Oh, oh, wow. Whoa, Joe and Quaz, all the HP, the Deathfire Grass really working together. It's going to be the kill. A shutdown going on to Bjergsen finally. That's big gold for Dominic, but we already cool have down, five though. kills on him. Trying to get out, they are going to be able to take him down in the end. They wanted the retribution kill for Bjergsen in his first death, and it is back and forth. Boy, boy, kind of teeter-tottering on whether he wants to go in or not. It means his life. Cop still doing what he can, and these guys may be baiting themselves into too much. So Bjergsen... He got a huge chunk out of Quas with that yep. aggressive play, mm -hmm. and he also got the whole um, Wukong ultimate burned on him. So Wukong ultimate only hitting one person, it wasn't really the combo that Curse were looking for. Yes, they took out his high priority target, but since their team was stretched out, they couldn't keep up that pressure. And TSM rolling towards the inhib. Just flexing their muscles right in front of this inhibitor, a easily able to take down that turret cop. Could be next here if they don't want to get caught up by Z Kent and anybody spawning. It's only four seconds on Boy Boy, and everybody else is already coming off the fountain. So, as we check out the scoreboard, it is 13 to 7. The kill's really not slowing down. 54,000 to 43. That gold lead still going up for TSM. Yeah, that's just, it's such a, such a tough choice. You definitely want to burn everything you have to kill Bjergsen, and when he overcommits like that. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think I still like that call to to kill off Bjergsen because he's such a huge part of, of the team. And then it might have just been on Boy Boy going a little bit too aggressive in the second half of that fight that costs Curse um, an extra kill. So the Zanya is, is the right choice with the dive from Wukong. But mm -hmm. what's your bet on Bjergsen? Oh, it's a Rabadon's. I was gonna say. You think he's just going to buy damage? Sure, why not? He wants to make sure <laughs> that he can kill his target. You saw him right there go all in on Quas, um, not able to finish him off there. He wants to be able to get that, uh, not just a giant chunk out of his life, but actually get the gold from his kill. If he can't get a full Cyclone off, then he can't kill me. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> Six to three in turrets. That means Curse is scrambling for one gold that's sitting on the map. They don't have yet, and that's going to create more vision for them, which they're still losing out on. TSM putting those deep wards in the jungle, which is pretty much owned by them at this point. And we're going to wait for TSM to initiate next. They haven't been having any trouble doing that. We just saw how how much uh, things can go poorly if you don't have vision when yeah. you play super aggressive. Mm -hmm. Bjergsen's looking for these uh, solo kills here and these opportunities to pick members of Curse off. In order to do that, they're going to need to keep up all of this vision that they've invested in. Open inhibitor as they set up to do some damage. It doesn't really look like Wild Turtle can get in range just yet. You see him going towards the top side of that turret to give himself some more defense. The teams are pretty much face to face right now, but it's just that roundabout circle. Nobody really wants to connect if you don't have to. It's so big when you get an inhibitor down with one of these teams that's not really a siege comp or not really a poke comp because right. you don't have that easy access um, sieging up around these outer these inhibitor turrets. Having that one door open does wonders for this team. Um, and so because they got that Baron buff, they're really just going to look to clean up the rest of yep. the money on the map before they have to return. They've got guaranteed pressure up in the top. It allows them to freely um, get the rest of the resources that are available to them. It's only going to get harder and harder as that gold grows with the dragon. Three of those in favor of TSM now with the Baron in their favor. They have Giant's Belts coming out on a special. Everybody's kind of not buying beyond their means, but getting more than they need right now. Yeah, and they've actually, because they had so much map control with all the waves pushed up and the inhibitor down, it mm -hmm. opens up 
the opportunity for them to split up as a team. They don't have to stay right. together. They got multiple things done at the same time. They got a dragon at the same time as blue buff for Bjergsen, and then the rest of the members were setting up a bush gank just in case. They don't have to all be doing the same thing right now. They were able to split up and get multiple things done at the same time. Meanwhile, Curse just have to clear waves and stay inside their base. Bjergsen's done a great job of keeping the Blanc going, not allowing himself to fall off. Keeps his farm at 253, near the highest in the game, just for being able to have that AP AoE damage on clearing some of these waves. Obviously, the ADs and the tops have surpassed that, and they are trying to be huge for their team. Mainly right now, Quaz, really the main tank. We said that Wukong was built, or Dominate rather, building all that damage. It may have hurt them, really. Smiley face from Cobb. He's still happy. All they have to do is continually clear waves. Yes, one inhibitor down is huge because there's an open door mm -hmm. and TSM can return to that top lane when it respawns, but it's not two inhibitors down. Like You can still hold pretty uh, easily from one inhibitor down. It's just up to TSM to load armor onto one person, either the odd one or on Dyrus, and then that will enable them to go for the dive. The Affinity Edge being finished out. A great Solar Flare over. TSM loves diving this middle turret. It looks like they will go full on and back behind. Three kills coming out very fast, and it goes across the board. Dominate looking to get himself out of this situation, but it's a double kill for Wild Turtle as he hunts him down. And it looks like they're going to go straight for the Nexus. Well, they've loaded up enough armor. They go for the dive right there. Zeke trying to counter-initiate. He gets the stun onto multiple members, but Wild Turtle spell shielded it. Great game by Team Solo mid. Bjergsen really working the LeBlanc in middle. Everybody else very strong in their lanes, and TSM is going to pick up a win here on the third day of Super Week. Much more control. It, it actually, it really just One looked like they did exactly what Reggie said. Go in there. Do what you need to do. Yeah, it's there. Both of them sort of had similar strategies. They wanted to fight uh, because they both had area of effect. But TSM chose the champions that were going to win their lanes early. By default, you know, Shivana early against Mundo, that's a thumbs up there from Dyrus. A, a Bjergsen LeBlanc versus the Boy Boy Riven, that's another thumbs up. So oh, those two should be ahead early. And then. All that the odd one had to do was hard farm his jungle because, uh, you know, Dominate took him a while to get that good Cyclone. It seems that when the Ribbon matchup comes out, didn't work too well against Kale. We saw it last game not work against LeBlanc. Boy Boy tried his hand on it. But that's the thing, they forced Boy Boy into that. They got some bans out, they took the Akali out right away, and then Boy Boy still tried to play a champion that he could carry the team on. And that level two LeBlanc just kind of cancels out Riven if you get that, that next minion of the wave and you hit it first. It really does seem like it all went according to plan for yeah. TSM. As their coach said, they just had to keep calm and play their game, ban out the weird things. Like we said, Riven in, into LeBlanc, I don't think we're going to see a lot more of that uh, because we've already shown two times in a row now yeah. LeBlanc coming out pretty big in that matchup. And that's, that's one of the things the teams are going to have to watch out for. With the meta that moves around, you know, how are you going to stop that? You have to get the wards out before that period of the game. Because what was it? TSM, we said, was warding red buff and was warding the Wraith camp to keep Dyrus safe right at eight minutes of proxy farming. And he did a good job. I mean, as Shivana, he was able to pull up the jungler, at least get a little bit of jungle vision on Dominate. Just those few yep. instances when he saw jungler top allowed his bottom lane, that wasn't the one lane that was going to inherently yeah. win allowed them to play more aggressively and then by default get more gold because they're getting uh, the harass off as well right. as the, the farming. Another thing that played into the role of, uh, unfortunately, the loss was how good Dominate played, or at least the fact that he was grabbing the kills because they weren't spread out enough among the team. The economy just wasn't there for the rest of the players. So when you do rely on those double AOE CCs for your team composition, then you really need to have them work out. And he had some really good Wukong ults. Yeah, he did. I mean, bottom lane, they were able to get that first kill. It, it was It was beautiful. Um, but if the other team plays smart in the end game and they spread out, it makes it really hard yeah. for you to repeat success with those combos.